Hello guys and gals and welcome back for another episode of Indie Impressions. My name is Nick and today we're checking out Small Worlds, written by David Shute, or Shute, I'm not sure how he wants it pronounced. Anyway, it's a casual exploration, pixel-based platformer and it was recommended by a viewer. I thought it looked very cool. I tried it out for just a, you know, couple of minutes and it seemed like a lot of fun. I think you guys are going to get into it. It's uh, pretty atmospheric, pretty lo-fi. I think those are things that we aspire to check out on the channel. So let's start it up. And we'll see what we've got to see. There is too much noise. So here we are, presented to this little biodoom room here where we're controlling our figure who happens to look a little bit like a cigarette or something. Uh, just, you know, dyed red, of course. <clears throat> so we can head downward, and you'll see there's some sort of a fog of war that is being revealed as we move around. And in turn, we're also revealing more of the map because the map is actually zooming out. Uh, which is kind of an interesting perspective. So underneath us, you see there's actually some flashing dynamic lighting, which is not something I was expecting to see in a lo-fi style game like this. Uh, you can see we can work our way through some of these little pixelated areas here. There's actually some foreground background action going on. So you can see we could actually jump behind this area, but over here we can go in front of it, so that's pretty cool. Good attention to detail. It's looking surprisingly polished. There's a little strobing red light there on that panel. And you'll notice everything has a nice little, like, a texturized look, almost like it's got a bit of a gritty, like, carbon fiber appearance, uh, which is slowly getting more and more minimal as we move away from the beginning area. Uh, so there are some areas down here that look like they've degraded to a point where we can't actually traverse them. Um, you might also notice that our figure is actually smart enough to climb up single pixel steps, which is kind of a nice touch as well. Uh, we've actually moved away so far that we've revealed what appears to be some sort of a space station or spaceship or something kind of sci-fi looking. Gotta be careful though, because over here, if you fall through this crack, you go all the way back and you gotta walk all the way around again. Nobody wants to do that, so we're gonna avoid that. So making our way a little further, we notice there is a cracked biodome over here which we can proceed down through. Uh, there's also another area which will zoom us even further away. I'm not sure if I'm supposed to be over here though. Uh, why not? Not sure if you can even die in this game, so I figure I might as well explore what I can. <clears throat> Things are looking interesting. Uh, let's make our way down through this little crack in the wall, and what's over here? Oh, another angle in the same area. Alright, down further we go. Uh, we can go through this. No? Okay, that's just a loop-to-loop. -loop. And that's the other side of the wall I couldn't get past, so... I guess things are still proceeding normally. What about over here? Not much going on. Alright, looks like we're reaching the lowest point that we can get in this structure. May as well reveal all of this to the side here. Oh, what is this? Okay, I guess I went through a portal of some kind. Uh, so I guess we're going to also be revealing multiple areas. I thought this was going to be just the one. So maybe a little bit heavier on the platforming aspect in this particular zone. Nothing wrong with that. Some lovely ambient music going on in the background. I believe it said it was by Kevin McLeod. Or McLeod? I'm not sure how to pronounce his name either because I can't pronounce anyone's name. But I know he is quite the accomplished musician. I've seen his work featured in a number of games that I've played on the channel. Although, none of the titles are coming to mind at the moment, but that's okay, I'm sure. It won't be too hard to figure out where his portfolio lives, and go check that out later on. Alright, so we've got some kind of a cracked up mine asteroid area, uh, which is actually pretty cool looking. There's actually some lovely background effects, and since things keep being revealed as we get further and further away, it's uh, pretty neat to see that all happening in front of us. Alright, we gotta make our way up, I'm gonna presume, because so far I haven't had much success in the direction I've been taking things. Let's, uh, let's make our way up. Maybe a few good jumps here are necessary. I think we got that under control, though. Alright, cool. Onward and upward we go. Let's see if we can make our way a little left. I want to keep revealing the map. Oh, what is this? Some kind of special crystal. Okay, I guess I solved that area. So maybe these areas are sort of like the portals at the end of a Mega Man game where you have to fight 
each of the bosses, and then it reveals something. Or, you know, it reveals your progress forward, I guess. What's down here? There's another crystal here. I can't get to it, though. Surprisingly creepy atmosphere in this space station looking area for a little pixelated looking game. Alright, so I guess we're gonna make our way through each one of these and look for that special gem. I kind of figured that was the case once I saw the first one, but you know, you gotta jump into this stuff head first and see where it goes. Totally into the music here. Oh, you can actually see it flashing off in the distance to give you a bit of a clue as to where you might want to head. Uh, and I guess that's why the title is Small Worlds and not Small World. There are multiple worlds for us to partake in. I'm really enjoying this aesthetic as well. I know it's not the most attractive thing, perhaps, but in a weird, like, sprite art kind of way, I actually find it quite nice. Uh, it's reminding me a little bit of that old Worms game, Liero. You know, the live-action Worms combat game that was all super violent. If you haven't played that, that's a good time. I might actually want to do that for the show. See what happened to that game. I haven't touched it in years. So, uh, I guess I need to make my way right somehow. Thankfully, it looks like I can get through all these little cracks on the bottom. I wasn't sure if I was going to expect this to be more of like a pure exploration game or more of a platformer. It's actually a pretty nice blend between the two. And the further away we get, the more interesting this art looks. I don't know if you guys agree with me on that, but that's my take on it anyway. It's coming out like a bit of a maze. I like the approach here. This is something that I think a lot of people might be interested in making something like this of their own. Uh, not probably the most time-consuming type of game to make. Especially because it's largely passive, it's really just art that you can walk through. But something about revealing it like that makes it much more attractive than if this was just... You know, the camera stayed zoomed in, and you followed your character along, and you got to the end of a maze. I mean, that's not really that interesting to play, it's just sort of you walk and then you eventually win. This, it feels like you're accomplishing something as you go. You're revealing more and more of something like a puzzle, like a, a jigsaw puzzle, perhaps. I mean, it's, it's quite directly exactly like a jigsaw puzzle, except for the whole matching the corners thing. I think most of us have that down pat, though. You know, you look for the edges, you rotate some stuff. You rotate your owl, you do what you gotta do. I never found jigsaw puzzles to be all that challenging, to be honest with you. I've always liked them. I just never really found too many of them that were particularly difficult. They were more just time-consuming than anything else. That was a surprisingly long little path we're going on. And I believe they were probably injecting some sort of a little invisible narrative throughout. It's like a, a sweet snow globe we're building here, or kind of crazy Fabergé egg. Very exciting. I, I do kind of want to reveal those little bits over there I missed, but at the same time, there's not that much to them. Alright, so there's two of four revealed. Let's go check out the blue one. We'll save the red for last. The red sounds the most aggressive. <clears throat> so what's our vibe going on here? So we've got some sort of a toxic cityscape in ruins. I believe we're telling a story of some sort of abandoned civilization. And perhaps we're reliving some memories from times past, or we're traveling to the actual locations. It's hard to know. Regardless, it seems much more ambitious than I would have pegged it for at the very beginning. I thought we were just going to be exploring one large, ever-evolving map. But I think this actually serves it much better, especially if you're trying to frame this as more of like an art piece than simply a game, and I think that is probably what we're going for. So you can see the toxic waste draining into the water, quite directly making a statement there. It's actually a pretty nice effect as you see it blending together. I can take my lift up to the clock tower and watch out for some Medusa heads, perhaps. Alright, so what's gonna happen up here? Is there another crystal? I make my way over the top? Yes, I can. And I haven't seen any flashing yet from the jewel. 
probably a bad sign. Where can I... Oh, I can go through this edge here. The water is actually adding an extra little element. We've got some gears. So if I really wanted to be completionist, I could probably take this down. Oh, no, I can't. Oh, okay. Well, that's about all we get to see of this area. Still very cool. Oh, okay, the crystals are just moving here, and I guess that's going to uh, reveal one more final area, perhaps, at the end. Or some kind of a conclusion. <clears throat> In this area, we've got, like, a They Bleed Pixels aesthetic, which is kind of cool. Still a pretty big fan of that art style. Kind of curious to see where that developer goes with their next game. Uh, it seemed like a very good start. I'm not sure, was that their first game? It may have been. So, oh, wow, I can't seem to get up on that edge. And sorry if the details are a little bit shady there. Because I don't have a perfect memory. I actually have a pretty poor memory in general. And it's quite an accomplishment that I'm able to remember as many indie developers as I even can. Although I have to say, the one thing about me is, for whatever reason... Uh, my poor memory doesn't seem to be terribly affected when it comes to game stuff. I usually can remember most of that. But little specifics that I might not have a ton of surrounding, like, auxiliary details about. That kind of stuff tends to go by the wayside. So what are we revealing here? This is quite mysterious. Purple, and it looks like it's bloody at the same time. Wow, we're going through some kind of ribs. Alright, so that would be... The last jewel. And we're now at the bottom. Oh, we've just disconnected from our space station. And we've taken a ship to silence. Wow, that was kind of heavy. I guess we uh, were perhaps one of the last living life forms. We just got to reveal uh, the path that our civilization ended on. Uh, we ended up on a space station of some kind, and I think we just ejected ourselves into the sun. So, sorry about that. I didn't mean to leave you on such a dark note. Uh, but still, a very cool game. Surprisingly interesting. I wasn't expecting a ton, but, you know, I was very happy to see that there was so much going on there. So that was for the Casual Gameplay Design Competition number 6. And this is, uh, I know a lot of you ask me, how do I find all the games that I do for the show? This is the kind of thing that I would now go investigate. Now I know there is a casual gameplay design competition, and there are at least six of them that have happened. And I'm going to go see if there are some more that are worth checking out for the show. So, I mean, I already have a backlog of several hundred games, but I never want to stop adding to it, because I guess that's what I'm doing at this point. I just, I'm, I'm building on to this list endlessly and just going through and grabbing the most interesting ones I can find. Uh, and then also making sure to go back and do a few viewer recommendations and the occasional uh, developer requests because I don't want to send the message that I'm not open to covering pretty much any uh, good developer requested game that does end up getting through uh, to me. So yeah, I do like to do that. Uh, pretty much all of this is its not exactly a hard and fast plan. I go through it as I go. I, I list things. I make a lot of, you know hopeful plans, and then I sort of try and follow them through as well as I can, but, you know, there's a little bit of a scattershot element to it, too, and I go where it looks interesting on the day that I feel compelled to cover the thing that I feel like compelled to cover, I don't, I don't know. Anyway, I think I'm rambling in circles now, but I, you get the point. just wanted to give you a little bit of insight into my process, my uh, mental process for how I might choose a game like this, but in this case, it was not really that big of an influence because this, like I said, was requested by a viewer. So you can also do that if you'd like to get in touch with me. There are myriad ways to do so, uh, but I would recommend to start by heading over to the website, which is www.indie-impressions.com. If you'd like to view all of the shows or episodes in this uh, ongoing, endless journey through all indie games, I have been saying that, I'm sure we're not going to cover all indie games, but you know what I mean. Uh, please do visit that website. You can sort them by distribution method, by platform. You can see all the free ones, all the ones on Steam or Desera. Uh, you can even type in developers into the search box if you want to check that out. Uh, I do recommend that you stop by. because We also have some forums so you can meet some like-minded indie fans like yourself, discuss some of the things that go on on the show, make some recommendations if you choose, and uh, just generally stay in touch with what's going on. <clears throat> 
I do also have a Facebook page, if you'd like to visit that as well, it's facebook.com slash indieimpressions. If you'd like to leave a like on that page, you'll get every day's new video delivered right into your Facebook stream, as well as any contests or news updates that go on with the channel, and that is usually where I go to leave my news updates. Uh, the site has been a little bit less for that, but also Twitter is the other thing. And if you'd like to follow me on Twitter, at Rockley Smile is the way to do so. All the links for my social media are going to be right in the description, uh, as well as the link to go check out this game for yourself, so I do recommend that you go do that, because it's quite cool, actually. And it might be a fun one to walk through with a friend and talk about the implications of such a thing. Uh, but yeah, if you're an indie developer and you'd like to get in touch with me about possibly showing off your game, quickest way to reach me is the contact form on the website, but like I said earlier, I also have a Twitter, uh, which is a great way to start a quick dialogue with me if you'd like to. And that goes for anybody. If you have a recommendation, if you just want to say, hey, if you uh, like what I did, if you didn't like what I did, if you, you know, in particular with some video, let me know. I'm always up for feedback, criticism, or just general discussion about indie games, and I do quite a bit of tweeting myself. So I would love to hear from you if you'd like to stop by. Uh, that is going to do it for another episode. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you come back again tomorrow for another episode. I do a new one every single day. Uh, we're almost to a year of consecutive indie game coverage, and I do intend to keep going beyond that year. But thank you all for making that possible and for sticking around for so long. So I hope to talk to you again tomorrow, and I hope you have a lovely night. Later!